what is it actually like to be a sea turtle biologist? One morning I was at a seaside diner in Florida and I was having breakfast when I could see from my seat that a fisherman on the dock had hooked a little sea turtle. So naturally I ran out there to help and help get the turtle unhooked and ran up to the fisherman's side and I said, it's okay, I'm a sea turtle biologist. And he said, kind of squinting as he turned up, looked at me, really? I said, yeah, really? So we got the turtle unhooked and freed the turtle. But this little event made me wonder, what do people actually think a sea turtle biologist does? Now, assuming that you know being a sea turtle biologist is not some mythical job, you might be picturing someone snorkeling alongside a turtle in tranquil blue waters, or maybe someone at SeaWorld in a tank feeding a bunch of plump sea turtles. But not just for you, Mr. Fisherman, but also for all you budding biologists out there, here's what it's actually like to be a sea turtle biologist. Let's start with some of the less desirable bits. As a sea turtle biologist, I actually spend a lot of time away from sea turtles at my computer. Analyzing data, writing and editing scientific papers, preparing figures for conferences, writing reports, and even writing computer code in the terminal window. You know that blue screen with the white boxy letters? Oh, you know in Jurassic Park when Samuel L. tries to crack Newman's computer virus? No? Anyway, a ginormous part of sea turtle science and conservation, and science in general, is actually spent tick, tick, ticking away at our computers. This part of being a sea turtle biologist is not for the uncommitted. As a sea turtle biologist, I also spend quite a lot of time in another fluorescent cave. The lab, analyzing samples, running experiments, building contraptions that you might use in the field, mixing chemicals, pipetting, stuff. Lab work is definitely tedious, but it's what turns those hard earned field samples into actual data. Woohoo! Okay, so the field. The field is essentially wherever a biologist goes to study plants or animals in the wild. And this is probably where a lot of you think a sea turtle biologist tends to hang out. For a sea turtle biologist, the field might be a pristine beach or a coral reef or a seagrass meadow, or maybe even the open ocean. Basically anywhere that's pristine and beautiful, but not too cold. That's right, as a sea turtle biologist, I spend a lot of time in pretty pristine places looking for sea turtles. And you're probably thinking, sign me up, right? Well, before I get to the truly wonderful parts about setting sea turtles in the field, here are a couple things you might want to know. Like many sea turtle biologists, I study sea turtles on nesting beaches. Mama turtles like to lay their eggs at night and in the summer, which means they have to stay up all night long, sometimes till seven in the morning, and then sleep during the sweltering heat of the summer days. What's that? Air conditioning? Not in the field. Sometimes it can be really rough. As a sea turtle biologist, Intense sleep deprivation is just part of daily life. Here's another fun tidbit. The coastal areas where sea turtles like to nest and hang out are also great breeding areas for biting insects. Mosquitoes, flies, sand gnats, ticks. I've had nights in the nesting beach where the bugs are so bad, it makes me second guess every step of my life that got me to that point. Or maybe I want to rip my eyeballs out. And I don't even work in the tropics where sea turtle biologists risk malaria, dengue fever, uh, yellow fever, chagas, you name it. As a sea turtle biologist, being an involuntary blood donor and occasional parasitic host is just something you have to get used to. At this point, I'm gonna kind of skim over persistent dangers like biting plants, scorpions, spiders, snakes, crocodilians, and some places jaguars and gorillas, not the gorillas with the no you're thinking of, and talk about the more vomit-inducing parts of the job. Yay, vomit! It's actually pretty normal for a sea turtle biologist to take up a knife and necropsy turtles that are found dead in our study areas. Now, a turtle that's been floating in the ocean for a couple days gets pretty nasty pretty quickly. And that can test even some of the strongest stomachs. And the same goes for nest inventories. Digging up and popping open unhatched eggs that have been in the ground for 70 days can be pretty vile to say the least. Actually, on my project, we call those things vomitoriums. As a sea turtle biologist, testing your vomit reflex in the name of science is just part of the game. So, being a sea turtle biologist is not all rainbows and butterflies more like coffee binges and bot flies. It can be difficult, grueling, blood draining, and downright gross, but it can also be supremely rewarding. As a sea turtle biologist, I get to live in the forest and work on the beach. I get to watch every sunset and sunrise, and I get to patrol the beach under the moon and stars every night. As a sea turtle biologist, I get to watch adult turtles that might be 50 or 60 years old emerge from the ocean or crawl up the beach to lay their eggs. I mean, you can see the contractions, you can hear their breaths. And then a couple months later, 
I get to watch hatchling turtles boil up out of the sand and race to the ocean. These are ancient, awe-inspiring rituals in biology that I get to see multiple times a year that some people never see in their entire lives, and I get to do it for my job. As a sea turtle biologist, whether it's at my desk, in the lab, or on the beach, I get to feel a real sense of purpose in whatever it is that I'm doing, that it will help sea turtles survive. If it's writing a research paper to inform a conservation action, or talking to a group of high school students about plastic pollution, I'm inspired by the fact that what I'm doing is making a difference. And last, and probably the most rewarding, as a sea turtle biologist, I get to share sea turtles and science with others. Like a lot of projects around the world, my project involves volunteers that come to see the turtles and help with the research. To be able to go out on the beach and look for a nesting turtle and show it to people, and to see a group of hatchlings go to the water is a truly unique privilege. On top of that, I get to teach people how to collect data, and I get to talk about how science works. I get to foster an appreciation for the value of science, not just in sea turtle conservation, but also in all aspects of human life. And so with that, to you, Mr. Fisherman, and to you, budding sea turtle biologist, I hope you have a better idea of what it's actually like to be a sea turtle biologist. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can find more videos here on YouTube as well as on our website. And don't forget to share with your loved ones, your friends, and even those people you think might need a little bit more information about how science works. Oh, and here's the name and website of the Sea Turtle Project that run out of Savannah, Georgia. Check it out.